Um, let's see, we haven't changed the agenda. No changes. Well, but Doug like Rowley's got something he wants to talk about. Oh, we can do it later. It's not a big deal. Well, or or get it out of the way. Okay. Well, <laughs> we had a discussion here not too long ago. I want to get to the bottom of it. You said, tell him he's got four days all the same. Yeah, I said that's what makes sense to me, right? Okay. Right. Matt didn't even want to haul no sand. And I said, let's haul the sand, put it up to the pit, stockpile it, and then we'll get a couple trucks and we'll get our trucks and we'll haul it down there, <laughs> get it over with. Right, right. So I went and told Mark that and said, Mark, this is what we want. Now he's been hauling sand down here and he's got it above the garage roof again. I, I just I just don't believe that that's right. I, I don't I don't know where the problem is. I don't know if he was told to do that or what. I know he had some past agreements. That's why I just said the wrong. He had past agreements with towns that owed him some time. And if that's yeah, if, yeah. if that's the case, if that's, that's, the case. if that's the case, he can still get them to haul gravel for him when he regravels the roads. You know, that's the way they can pay that back too. I just that might be part of it that's been in the schedule. I mean, that I'm, I'm not sure. But, I don't know what else about that kind of schedule. But shouldn't he even get a hold of me and tell me what was going on? Instead of just doing this, it's not yeah, it's not right. They know, here's, here's what After I, what I told him, because I said we should haul at least sand like we usually do, but we'll get it together and get it done within four or five days instead yeah, of right. keep dragging one truck, one truck, one truck, okay. two trucks. Maybe that's what they did. Maybe that was four days. I don't know. Well, I am going to figure out what you guys want, and then I'm going to talk to them. We either say, now you've got enough sand, stockpile arrested up there. If we need it next year, we'll haul it down in in March. That was yeah. my argument last time. It wasn't the don't take any sand here. It was, when was the last time we made it to the back of the pile? And then everyone, well, it's not like you go bad, and I get it. Um, I'm just totally sitting here on retaining certain fair costs, fair value kind of thing to the taxpayers. I don't think we need to break down 20,000 yards of if we don't need it, kind of thing. But. Well, right, and that we constantly don't need it. Right. I was, again, I mean, it's probably antique sand on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's like how many years? Who knows what's at the bottom right. of that sand bottom? And, and like you like we said last year, if, if it came March and we started getting shy in the file, it wouldn't hurt us to pull it out of the pit for one day or whatever. Yeah, yeah. We, we own the commodity. It's not like it's a Oh, and I think Colchester. So, yeah, I mean, it's true. It's, 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 it, it seems like a habit that they just can't break. And you're right. I don't, you know, I, I don't know in terms of, of um, you know, they owe us the time and that's and they all the sand. I don't know how easy it would be when we're doing road work to, to fit. It well, up. even if the, if Elmore, if, uh, if Eden owes us days of sand. Yeah. As big as that pile is, Eden, they could leave the loader up there and, 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 and Eden could load themselves. They can run loaders, they can run excavators, they can run everything. You know, Do it's not really looking at that because I admit once we get into winter, we get up there. Um, but, but with this pile, how how far down do we usually get that pile? Like we worked it from the front to the back, and I would say I would say this year we didn't even get close to half based yeah. on what I saw. Not, not that's not. why I said last time, like, hey, well, let's just keep this within reason because it seems like we have to salt the whole pile, right? Yes, my understanding we salt the whole thing, yes. And I, I had asked Mark last time I was up there how much salt, and he said it was really minor. So, they do cap, they cap it, yeah, they cap it, so they don't, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know what I don't know. I'm not. I think I think we, we come to the agreement tonight that they, if they have enough, they have enough. You guys have been around here a lot longer than me. I'm just uh, well, well I mean. Leave it up to the pit, stockpile up there. Right. Yeah, Put up friggin' 3,000 yards up there. They're not going to use everything they got here because I don't know how far 
that pile goes back <laughs> to the end, but I get the funny feeling it's two years worth of sand there. Yeah, that one, that one's probably, of course, you know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen, but I don't care at this point. <laughs> yeah, well, what, here's what I think is going to happen. This is going to be, this coming winter, we will need three times as much sand. Right. <laughs> and, and, we, and we'll have it up to the end. Yeah, we'll have it up to the end. It's like, okay. We've never used half the filing this coming year. You know, but that's okay. You're right. It's not as though this winter we have a shortage. Right. And this winter we can talk about putting bigger stones in it. Remember. Yeah. That, and that that may not. So I just want to make sure that we're not running into the same problems next one year over and over. Well, I think myself with doing the job for 34 years, because when I first started there, we were using three eighths half inch. And then we went to three quarter and we continued with three quarter. And the classes that Dwight and I went to in Burlington, there was 30 guys there. And there was a state man there, engineer. And he was asking what we all used for road sand, stuff like this. It was a winter project class. And Dwight and I raised our hands when it come to three quarter. And he said, now, this is an engineer. This is coming from a guy that been in college for five years. <laughs> he says, yeah. three quarter is a lot better for your roads and it binds and sticks better to your roads than the small stone. And we went to using, we always use three quarter. And, and actually, believe it or not, when we were getting so much ice, I was into a using an inch screen and nobody ever complained. Nobody over there never complained. They actually said good things about it because we love the stone. We love the stone, but apparently, you know, up to Garfield, they don't have the stone, but you look at the stone pile they got up there and it's <laughs> a thousand yards of stone, you know? But well, we can't move backwards, right? We move forward, right? Yeah. So uh, I think we just talk to Mark, say, hey, Mark, I think you got enough. And yeah. Tell him what we want to do up, the, up at the pit, right? Well, that's up to you guys. That's why I'm bringing it up. I know I'm a little bit hot about it because I did talk to him about it. And I don't know where the problem is, but. Well, you, you have to understand yeah. that the discussion at select board meetings is in the minutes. So back in the end of April, last meeting of April, the select board talked about sand in the four day rush and trying to get it done once and, and be done with it at a certain amount. You ended that discussion by saying, we're gonna to talk to Mark and we're gonna look at some more information, maybe as a job sharing thing that Matt was mentioning. And you were gonna talk about it again at the board level on May 9th. That's how you left that meeting. It didn't say Roland's gonna tell Mark to get it done in four days. You didn't get that far. I didn't do that. No, no I'm, just, I'm, yeah. I'm just saying there was no conclusion to go and order anything. But I just told Mark to stockpile it. I, 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 I know. I'm just saying the ordering part is what I'm getting to. So when you want to order from the select board collectively. Give, I, a, give a direction. Right. When you want to get to that point, it has to be clear in the minute. So saying that you're going to talk about it in concept and sort of get to this sort of almost decision and then defer it to May 9th. And then you don't talk about it on May 9th and you don't talk about it on May 23rd. And now you talk about it on June 13th, which is practically the middle of the construction season. And Mark may or may not have been finished. He may be done. I don't know. That's another question. Well, I'll put a motion. On board. Right. I mean, that's what I'm getting. Yeah. If, you, if you really want to make it clear that he's done drawing sand. <laughs> <for this laughs> okay. so he wants to stockpile two yeah. or 3000 yards up to the pit. Yeah. That's fine. But no more hauling sand down to this garage that's, it. that's clear yeah. <laughs> that's way better i just want to make sure yeah. that we don't have miscommunication though and, 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 and we're it, supposed to the liaison officer and and and, and the highway foreman is supposed to be to communications going on. right right and it's not happening no no i'm, I'm saying it could be happening because whatever happens at this board you should be talking to the yeah. foreman but when there's an order or directive that goes that much further where it should be the, the board. Uh, let's get a first and second if you guys yeah. want to get into this. And what yeah, and, and I think that the grand conversation was, I mean, we, we don't really have a quantity of what's there. There's no sense of resalting the same material that we never touch. That was a big part of the conversation. He should know because I yeah. said to him, 
to keep track of the sand we bring down here. So yeah. we should know what he's brought down this year. Yeah. For sand. Yeah. 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 So you can bring that information next meeting or something like that. Okay. Right. So we're only need to say that. Oh, sorry. Okay. Are you, are you waiting? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm just waiting for a <laughs> second. Right. Yeah. right, then he, but what we do need to find out. And, and a discussion, okay. uh, uh, I'd like a discussion with Mark of what quantity has been brought down and just, just a discussion. Yeah, let's just have it at the next meeting yes. as well to find out what it is. But for right now, we move to stop. The, get back to culverts. Get, yeah, yeah, to get back to the summer work. Yeah, stuff right. we agreed on getting, yes. And and who knows? I mean, I, I I'm not micromanager Mark every friggin' day. He, he I'm not have, neither. Yeah, he could have had one truck available, and he could have been grading roads and doing something, and just he was something to do, and maybe that's what happened. And so be it. They got something yeah. done. They stay productive. It's a good thing to see progress, right? You got something done. They did it, but get the culverts done. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Keep, let's keep going. So, um, I don't want to let him have a heart attack. No, either of them. <laughs> I'm very interested in finding this big guy. Anybody oppose? Anybody who's naming? Okay. Um, points. The uh, guy's still interested. The point of the El Valley Rail Trail Old Regional Committee Town Representative. Cy was the only respondent to a request to volunteer. So, Cy was having a great yeah, we're, like a, we're so no, I think he oh, he has to fill out some paperwork and pick one, two, or three years. Sure. Okay. He can do that himself. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess we need to move to a point. Size Girls is the regional for the Loyal Valley Rail Trail. Why did they tell me love it? Regional <laughs> Community Town Representative. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah. Okay. And then he, he reports stuff back to us. Is that what he does? Yeah, he's the liaison between the state and the town. And I think they're planning on six meetings a year to just share information, really. They talked about one vote, but I'm not sure what the voting would be about. Maybe to approve minutes or something. But, um, well, I know I want nothing to do with it. You can have that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we, we get requests a lot for town reps. Yeah. yeah. And I always would say, well, hey, maybe one of the and so now I just got an advertising front porch forms. Yeah. You can see it there. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are busy enough. You know, so. But you can always trump an, uh, a regular resident if you wanted to say, well, remember if you had a burning need to get on. Well, <laughs> we seem to be doing better at putting the things on front porch forum and maybe. Possibly because I think we were doing much better about having stuff posted for the town and front yeah. forum. So people are definitely we're getting better responses to when you're looking for a for a volunteer or somebody to appoint. Where it's where actually people are pretty routinely responding. Somebody is the most interested, which is good. Get some involved. But they do get a volunteer up here to the roundabout. You see the see the state molded or somebody. So twice a year they're going to do that for us. They are. Yeah. That was their concession to not planning for maintenance. They decided to add twice a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess we need a uh, motion to appoint side. I'll make the motion to appoint side. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> I'll do it. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Right. The Moyle Valley Rail Trail too close to a recreation. Oh, I think <laughs> yeah. no, as in, I don't need it in my. <laughs> That's good. Well, I'm good. I mean, I'm way too busy now. Milton's thinking about building a rec center. They've allocated $200,000 just to study it. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Milton. Milton. You can't. $200,000 just to study it? Just to, just to see where they might put one of that sort of thing. Yeah, that's what they're talking permits. Like they're talking permits for a house now to get through like environmental and stuff is like a forty thousand dollar fight. Yeah, they, the state's biggest change was last July where they went to half acre. Yeah, a house yeah. and a driveway for a typical, not a super long drive. It's about a quarter acre, so you don't need to do much more on a single family house lot. 
And that's a ten to twenty thousand dollar add-on to a permit just for stormwater if you get over that half acre. Anything over three acre needs all of its own like it's multi-sector. That's right? a big thing. Yeah, yeah. that's I mean, and that's what you're getting into with a rec center. You're talking a three acre feet, so you're you gotta have a full stormwater water consultant. Yeah, it's a really expensive, expensive stuff. And they, they wonder why it's a problem to build affordable housing. Right. <laughs> right. That's the thing. Like it's that hard to answer. I'm glad I have my house. Yeah. So, next, our scoping study. Alan received a grant approval from VTrans for their, uh, they call it community. LVRT community grants to look at existing trailheads to try to figure out what amenities or issues there are safety wise. So the select board accepted that project, which was estimated $38,000. It's about 30,000 for the state and 8,000 for the town as far as a share, PD20 share. The process that you follow is you, hire, you select the consultant, which was VHV, the NES, something something they're big and they did the whole 93 miles mm -hmm. so they're pretty well versed in rail trail and working with vtrans after you select them then they provide the cost proposal their original cost proposal about two weeks ago came in at fifty-eight thousand, way above the thirty-eight thousand. so both the state and the town me uh got in touch with vhb and said we can't do that we're you know we're locked into a something close to that and the state said they will come up on their share and the town would hopefully come up on our share <laughs> if if the alternative if the scope of work could be reduced basically so the state uh got a second proposal from vhb for forty two thousand, which increases the town's share by about eight hundred dollars and the state will pick up the rest so i think we i think we did okay it's pretty close. It's 800 more. It comes from Sidewalk Reserve. Um, the state, it's really a state project. It's one of those things because it's all state property. It's a town. What is the open study is Depot Street? Depot Street intersection of the rail trail, where there's some safety concerns there, plus how do we lay out the lower part? The David Ring corrals there. Uh, where do you put a kiosk? Uh, is there anything else out there? And try to be consistent with all the other trailhead yeah. design. In May, the state released a guidelines book about how things are supposed to look consistent along the 93 miles. So that that is new information that we'd have to incorporate. So is that to the left of the parking lot where it comes up down over that dip? Is that where you're talking, where that water is running? Comes across the road on Depot Street. Yeah, right. So at the intersection of Depot Street, Depot Street Extension, right. When the village put the sidewalk in, they did sort of two errors. They put the catch basin sort of in the wrong spot. So the water shoots across the intersection. It hits the house on the south side of Depot Extension. Um, uh, I forgot his name right away. But anyway, so he's had to put ditching and try to deal with the water from Depot Street, which we, he really shouldn't be in that condition. Oh. But, and they also forgot to put an ADA ramp on that corner. So there's no way for people coming from the rail trail to get up to Main Street. They have to go down Depot Street Extension to where the sidewalk ends. And then they have to go back up. And there should be some kind of ramp at that corner. So those are the safety issues and ADA things. But it's also a visibility thing. You, you can drive through there yourself and see the trail almost disappears coming in from Morristown. And it's sort of hidden by um, that weed is yeah. there. Uh, so anyway, VHB will do a good job. They'll come up with a cost proposal, budget, all that stuff. The state will have to approve everything because it's all on state corridors, um, state highway right away. So I'll make a motion for the hundred dollars to come out of the sidewalk reserve fund in addition to yeah, it's a forty-two thousand dollar. I'll second it. Yeah. Yeah, just okay. just mention the forty-two thousand. That's out of the total, yeah. Right. <laughs> all favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Uh, okay, all right. Highway training in the I think that was in your packet, maybe. Uh, let me just make sure it's in your packet. If it's not, I have copies. It is. 
Yeah, it's on page 20. Yeah, there's that. This is like it's the building. There you go. <laughs> Just in case. It's like, who's packing this? So on page 20 is the April 11th incentive plan, which deals with basic training, no compensation. It deals with cross training at the bottom, which is expected. Um, and that's not compensated. The middle part is proof of training where the employees have options to go to Vermont local roads and progress through a series of credit hours, get uh, the four different levels of certification. Uh, the, that's in category A for compensation. Category B is the certifications and sort of special skill um, regarding data uploads for the MRGP and keeping all, and basically capturing all the work the highway crew does every year. So every year, the VT culverts MRGP database will record all the road segments done by year, the type of culverts replaced, all that detailed stuff that makes for good database. That's a, that's a highlighted as a skill position or task. Uh, same thing with the, the underground storage tank certified person that is required by the state. Um, Ryan does that now. He's responsible for the testing weekly. He's responsible for reporting. He did the inspection with the state person last week to review our methods and means. And he has annual, I think it's a two-year certification task he has to take to stay certified and basically make sure the tank is not functioning the way it's supposed to. And all those reports are kept with Ryan and then they're reported to the state with our licensing renewal stuff. I think anybody with underground storage tank has to do this. Now, now have they had to pump that tank out or anything? No, the, there's a double wall. So okay. we, we test for that double wall space to make sure there's no water coming in and, right. or fuel le leaving out. And so far, that's been good. That's an action item later. Yeah, that's, that's part of our decision about replacing it or keeping it. So what? What? What ins insurance for having that tank in there? What what's the extra cost you think? Mm -hmm. Let's get through this item first. Yeah, that's another that, that is a we have a bigger discussion yeah. on whether okay. to place okay. it. Okay. This is just the yeah. certified person whether they should be awarded some extra money for taking on the responsibility to yeah. tell us okay. in the state okay. that there's okay. a problem. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, but you're right. They're they are really related, but that's yeah. It's a separate discussion. So if you, and those numbers were not discussed before. So then that's really what I want to focus in on today. Um, the regional category C is, um, they come up with a brainstorm and the crew says, we want to do this. It's going to take some extra effort. Maybe, you know, us doing our own research comes up. It's going to save a lot of money. Is there any, uh, recognition back to the crew if they take on a big project. This is a discussion they would have with you before it started. And that's what C is all about. And I don't know what that would be. It could be a method and means. They might say, we've got a whole different way of doing sand. It's going to save the taxpayers 10000 a year. We call, and it, we call can, it value engineering. When I'm wrong. Yeah. But can you, know, can you recognize that? If, if they do value engineering or they do extra effort, so they would make an argument to you and say, Here's what we think. And then if it proves out, they get us something on the backside. Maybe it's only a pizza, right? but, but maybe it's a base adjustment or one-time recognition or something. I can almost probably tell you where that's going to go. So, they told me 10 years ago, there wouldn't be no sand being used. And state quit using sand. So. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so... The thing with Brian and the and taking care of the underground tanks, that's a that's a B. Yeah. He's certified to do that. <clears throat> and we do need one per it's mandated we have one person that takes on that responsibility. So so the question was, is it is it worth 50 cents, 25 cents? I it's I don't think it's worth any more than 50 cents because it's not a lot of time, but it is a skill, it is a mandated thing that has a the, the the testing and certification isn't like 
going to college. I mean, it's it's more of a keeping this on schedule and making sure it's done, done the right way. So it's it's I don't know. I wanted to focus on the dollars because it's really hard for me to suggest something. But we just gave the guys all raises, right? But this is like this. Is, it's totally a uh, right. exactly. This is this is. This, mm -hmm. But this would go to the base salary based on training. All yeah, you know, all A and B go to the base. Yeah, and so you want to be careful with what you're. Correct. And that's why last year we talked about this. We, we did hit the subject last year. And that one of my concerns was if you're smart and you work here and you say, you know what? I mean, it's like teachers level up, level over. You know, hey, if I take two extra classes. I yeah, or, or they get some kind of certificate or something. Yeah. And I just don't want to take the energy of the guys working on getting the roads fixed and doing the work they're supposed to be doing in order to give them 50 more cents level or effort level or over kind of thing. Yeah, you can cap, you can that's cap. You can right. cap or spread it out so somebody doesn't spend a whole year getting one, two, three, four, five. And then right. they, so you could do that from a budget perspective. I think having the conversation that Ryan and I had was because I this hasn't responded since April 11th, which is the date of this thing. And I said, Do you guys have any changes it's on the agenda? Does the union have any concerns? And we said, no, we don't, we don't have any. We're kind of waiting for the select board to say what they're thinking. And the only thing that the program seems to make sense, you know, recognizing the things they do for no compensation. But when you get to the compensation amount, that's that's kind of and the scheduling, like Matt was saying, you know, when when can they take advantage of it? Right. Is it one adjustment or no more than 50 cents a year or no more than a dollar a year? So they spread it out. And at the same time, if you're if you're if my employer trains me, you can't take that training from me. I am trained, I am worth more money. Anyway, so I, I, I'm appreciative of that. So they have to have some support for that as well, you know. It works both ways. They're not paying for them to get trained. They need to mm -hmm. see a value in as well. How, how long are these courses? I mean, tell me 35 hours. So this, that mean they, it's 30 hours of class. Yeah, so you get that? Yeah, basically. They still get paid for that while they're doing 30 yeah, hour class. Yeah, so they'll go, a lot of them are half days now, so they might give you four hours. And by the time you actually sit in a chair for three hours with their breaks and all that stuff, right? Let's put, you know, so they'd have to go to six or seven to get that 30 credits, basically. Is that number just something you threw out there? Like, yeah. Oh, totally. It's, it was just to show you how it could work. Yeah. I, I haven't heard anything from anybody about the numbers, so it's totally up to you guys what you want to do. Um, Johnson did this a little bit and it created potentially a little grief if somebody is really taking advantage of something and somebody's like, I don't agree with training. I'm not going to take anything. So you, you, it's, you create that. How they can disagree with training. No, you create that, you brought the grumpiness of yeah. just because you went to class and he gets paid by, well, exactly why you yes. have this. Right. Yes. But you have to, that person has to but get over that. What would happen if you just, um, Give these guys an incentive while they went to class, and if he has to work on that tank two hours a year, give him the extra money then, like a you know, incentive. But you don't need to give him like forty cents or fifty cents for the whole year. Give him the, give him the, you're paying him for the class, so you give him an extra thirty dollars to go to the class, or forty dollars, or fifty dollars. You know, I can. I can see yeah, it right. if somebody um, goes and learns how to operate a grader, how to do a grader, right? Right. Um, really gets into something specialized like that, that then their base pay deserves to go, you know, because that's a that's a definite ad. I just right. I don't I don't know. You know, some of these other things to incentive it, are you better to do it with a one-time bonus? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, like Ryan takes on this job and he does it for a year, so you give him a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, you know, something like that. Just, <laughs> again, then, sort of throwing numbers back. And yeah, that might show the other guys, well, yeah. what's going to be the next thing I can maybe I can jump into? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like in the in the pack they talk about welding, you know, like right, you know, right. Like welding saving on. I think of those numbers personally, I think is a little high because like a 3% increase on their pay, right? Something like that. Yeah. So I think I if those numbers were half those numbers, it's an incentive to do it, but it's not an expense to the taxpayers or a burden on the taxpayers for the, you know, 
we're giving them a yearly increase anyway. So like they're, they're, this is an addition yep. to their yeah. increase. Yeah, so so it's 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 related to what you said. <laughs> they're more valuable. Yeah. Long term. Yeah. But if you if you want to do all twenty fives and then do a uh, one time on B, you know, do twenty five cents on A and then uh, one time on B, yeah. something like that. And that would be my, you know, it's just just adding that up. If someone really wanted to go gray guns in two months' time, they could add two dollars and twenty five cents to their salary based on just getting through some classes. Yeah. Which and if they just hustled through it, granted, we could put a cap on it, but if they went two months. They're not really getting the experience with the training, you know. Like, say you go through a greater training, yeah, yeah. So greater yeah. training, like it's good to go through the incentive class, understand it, then go out and get in the field and get three or four months experience to yeah. graduate that, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's it's like I said, it's, it's whatever you all want to do within that constraint of the budget and the timing and whether you want to let people go at it at twenty five cents or where you whether you want to say. There's going to be two parts to this if you if you go there. The first part is you're going to adopt this. If you adopt this, it'll be effective on a certain date. I think a couple of our employees have completed some credit hours, so they'll have to show what they've completed. And those adjustments could be done right away. The future ones, if they go to class, uh, one, one adjustment per fiscal year or something like that. So there's going to be a catch up in the beginning. And then a, once a year could be your could be your budget cap, so you're not letting somebody go for it all at once. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, that would. And if, and I think you treat them pretty fair overall. Yeah, anyway. you do. That's what I would say. <laughs> so, yeah. so this is more like just yeah. being, you know, and more encouraging or something. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, and that, and it is true. It'd be more encouraging to I think so. the next one to step up. To Why should I go? You know, yeah. well, you get a little something. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so you want to move that they're all 25 cents? You guys all look at me. Like I, no, I, I call it a city. I think you're, no, it makes I, sense. I suggested it. I think it but I hate the finger pointing that Matt said no, it. No, I no, love no, the no, idea no, that we no, all get involved in this I, conversation. I, I <laughs> <laughs> you only said a little high. I said 25. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I will go along with it if somebody wants to put it in the motion. <laughs> I'll make the motion. That twenty five cents for A, and then B is just a one time. Am I not going there? Yeah. Okay. Like, like an annual, well, probably an annual because if I do it for the year, yeah, four hundred dollars or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And B is um, an annual stipend. And then C is how much? As how much? Side. Would would all of those? Um, Will they are all of those jobs basically the same in B? Are they basically the yeah, same? Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, it's like doing the tanks is okay. I got I got what that is, and that's not a gigantic. Some of these others is it uh the MRGP is new because uh yeah, that's I think in July, I think I was talking to Rob Moore. I don't know about he's that. Look, he's looking at June to come and train the highway guys on the whole data upload to the digital road database, which is okay. part of the MRGP. Yep. So somebody's going to have to know how to log in, know how to get up there and upload all the information that they do in day one. They want to, at the end of the day, they're going to upload that new culvert they installed so that we'll have a current database, which is part of the MRGP. They did do record. that years ago. Would it, we have it on paper. With the GPS. Would it would it be yeah. a, would it be a pain in the butt, or is it legal to track hours, like a phase code? So if they're doing MRGP road work data for say four hours a week, and we give them an additional stipend for that four hours, is that legal? Uh, you can have a pay adjustment for we do it for Ryan when Mark's away. Right. He gets the extra dollar an hour while he's covering his assistant when Mark's away for more than one day as part of the contract. So if they were doing as a special skill, I don't know about the UST. That's every day for a few minutes. It's kind of a harder thing to quantify. What's the UST? That's the yeah, you know, sticking yeah, the tank, yeah, writing it down, down, getting your that would be a, that could be a second. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's a daily thing that takes a few minutes, but it has to be done every day or yeah, yeah that kind of thing. The MRGP upload. Um, we don't know enough about it to know what that's going to be, but at least there'll be some, somebody at the end of the day uploading data. So that 
that should be quick as well, actually, if they, the way it's set up, and I played with it a little bit, it's just a mapping system. You kind of left click to create a pop-up window and you enter all your data and you close it and it locks it into the state system. And then it creates a little icon on that road wherever the GPS coordinates were. So it's pretty, pretty simple there too, but it has to be, you know, in order for a good database to be built, it has to be done all the time. Right now, Mark takes it on a piece of paper and puts it on his desk. Right? It sits there. It doesn't go, you know, where that, that's what it, that's why I asked if we can break that. Like, like Davis Bacon weight is essential because given a one time stipend, the papers make still sit there. Yeah. yeah, the UST, we're either going to be in compliance or not at the end of the year. That, and we haven't had that issue with who yeah. Mark LaHulier did it. And now Ryan's doing it. It's always been that one person. And Well, we got a couple other guys there. Yeah, so the MRTP, I, I don't think like that. You can almost take, you could almost take that off for now, actually, until we figure it out. That's another option. We, we can add it back in because I can't answer the question about what that really means for time. I'm just... Yeah. Delete that for now and we can add it later. And it may be that everybody does it. It may be that everybody's trained and everybody does it and it's just part of the it's part of the job. It's and part of the job, yeah. Right. Like the UST thing, we could do like a one time certified for and two hundred bucks a year or whatever. If that's what we want to go with, because that that would equate to whatever basically. Yeah, two hundred, I think four hundred is probably better for a year. Well, that's twenty five cents an hour for right? Close, yeah, a little bit twenty cents maybe. Yeah. I'm just looking at the actual time if you're taking an hour going in. Yeah, well, it, it, it's pretty, it is pretty quick on, a, on the schedule. I think the inspections and reporting add a little bit, but not a lot. Okay. So it's, it, it, it is one of those things we have to do. We have to be good at it, and somebody has to be really responsible for it. Right. right. So there's some, it's whether it's 200, 400, 300, it's recognition of that extra. And again, if you want to delete the MRGP and settle on a dollar amount, the designated safety manager, other issue, we haven't been doing really well at that. In other words, we we have common sense safety training like we're doing now with um, with Jeff. Mark's trying to get through all the onboarding stuff, which is we have to document his training. But from a week to week, it's, it's loose. I mean, some shops, like I don't know what you guys do, like every Tuesday morning, you're going to sit here for one hour. We're going to go over tell, whatever, tell you talk, whatever you call it. And I, these guys are a little bit looser, so there's no way to prove what they're doing. But if you get called on something, it's one of the best practices you can have is to document what you're, you're training. What I used to do is just make up a sheet, like have some initial it or something, then have them sign it. And we sit down and talk for half an hour about it chainsaws stop it yeah or, you know whatever yeah inspection yeah. expecting your truck going over your truck or something and something. then i just have a paper each day or each week sign it but it has to be documented yeah i think so but i don't <laughs> i can't say that it's being done it might be informal around that table in their shop but yeah it's not yeah, but it, it, all it takes is a binder and what we do the same thing we do these little box boxes and we, we set the schedule like 10 minutes ahead and we'll say we're going to do the TV is not working today. So. <laughs> <laughs> call it things but and... again, is that sort of thing you can say, okay, somebody to take on this responsibility and the documentation is. Uh, and and, and that should be marked. Yeah. You know, and um, it should be, but if somebody else wanted to do it, it's sort of like, you know, but then here's a, here's a yearly stipend for doing it. There'd be a lot more incentive to get the paperwork done. Instead of you're sort of you're having to do it. Not really. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. So I, I feel like we're we're stumbling a little bit on MRGP and safety okay. for more information, maybe. So if you okay. want to skip. I'm gonna get MRGP, get it out of here because we don't know. Anything. Yeah. Well, well, like I'll let that establish itself, then we can yeah. revisit it. Yeah. And we the safety be. manager one, that's a that is a close call between you're supposed to have a designated safety officer on every project site. So Somebody to have the OSHA person go talk but to them. We haven't had no injuries up here to speak. No, they won't come for that. But I'm saying, we're, if you're doing the best management, right, you're supposed to know who that is. Right now, we send everybody to Mark, but he's not really doing the designated safety manual, so to speak. He knows all that, but he'll tell his crew, be careful of this, don't do that. 
but the documentation isn't being done like you're saying, Roland, I think on, on a weekly safety talk kind of thing. So anyway, uh, I can bring back more information on those two things if we want to just move on and skip skip those two and just do the UST. Perfect. UST, whether 200 or 400 or whatever you want to do on it. You know. <laughs> Brian, you get paid zero dollars for it. Anything I have is recognition. <laughs> So we can, we'll defer MRGP and safety for more details. Okay. I'll talk to the crew about it and see what they're thinking. Okay. The rest of it is done then if you agree with the rest of it because there's no compensation. Okay, in, in uh, Ryan's email, I have decided that I've had COVID when I can't remember things. It's no longer has anything to do with my age. I'm going to blame it all on COVID. So <laughs> Boy, I don't know. I've got to be great. Um, uh, it, and Matt, you were saying earlier, do we already have in place a step that, you know, you get, here's your raise, but then you, you've been here another year, so you get another whatever, which is what Morristown has, right? And it's what most teachers have. And you end up in horrible situations where people really don't understand how much money, and you agree to that, how much money every year you're voting this increase. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of the a, that's part of the snarl you see with teachers. And I'm not, I'm not saying that teachers aren't worth twice as much as they're being paid, as far as I'm concerned. But, but that in terms of the of the financial implications and and Budget. chairs. Um, you know, select boards, school boards, the public understanding what that means because it means, well, gee, we not only want a 3% increase this year, but then everybody gets their step, that's another 2%, and then you do this. And so by the time you get through, you feel as though you were going to say, yes, this is in times are tight, so everybody's going to get a 4% increase, and you got people getting 9% increases mm -hmm. yeah. and people not understanding. System, yeah, yeah, get, get the four percent, yeah. yeah, and the, and the old it, that step system is what causes that, yes, it I is. mean, it really is. And That's I, why I was a little reserved, like maybe in one you can get one step a year or something yeah. to that effect. Or I know it's not a lot, but it is recognition, you know, it's incentive recognition at the same time, right? It's just, and that's sort of the levels, but we don't. What do we currently have in our contract? Ever since I bought well, okay, I can go some back and back history a little bit. So as long as I've worked here, there's been a um, on the fly step discussion, mm -hmm. <laughs> on the fly market adjustment. Yeah, you know, um, we got a problem. We have to save. We have to retain these people yeah. Yeah. all the way up until the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So you you have that built into your your boards mentality a little bit it's not written down but everybody's aware things change and you have to kind of keep up and call around the other towns and we catch so that's that is part of the uh, uh benefit of having a board that kind of reacts to that stuff if you don't have a board that reacts to that stuff then you end up with some something more like what you have here's our agreement here's the contract teachers are good for that Highway usually is pretty good with that. We've it, it, we've broken that deal a little bit by going above the three percent. Right. So to establish the step means you respect the step because it's written down as a plan for people that are going to be there twenty years. It doesn't stop you from doing the base adjustment. It's really about that or um, the one time adjustments, but it really is about right. the base adjustment. So if you're going to do a contract with the union, which will start in spring for the next contract. And they're looking at Morristown, which has the CPI plus a step of one and a half or two or whatever. The CPI keeps moving like this. You pick a month, whatever it is, you do it. And, and then you add your one and a half or 2%. We don't have that here. The only thing we've ever talked about is three or four or 5%. And that's, that's been the extent. Right. It's always been two to five. In 13 years. And I think there is a benefit to keeping it simple. I do too. <laughs> I do too. And everybody, in, including you can explain it. To, yeah. And you're, you're not you're not boxed in where the market adjusted again. It gave everybody two bucks because looking at the market, looking at cost, looking at everything, they're good employees. You say, what can you know, what what can we do? That makes you know 
that's what an employer does. You know, you got to have the need to have that kind of flexibility. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, right. And for the same reason, I want to go through the the process of establishing this big matrix of what right. you're promising your and then nobody can understand it. Yeah, so, exactly. You know, listen, listen to the employees, watch the market, have some flexibility. If you want to buckle down, then you do those things, I think. Yeah, for sure. Um, if the economy slows down, maybe that's a good time for a step. But in this for the next year, I wouldn't touch anything with that. Just keep just keep your ear to the ground a little bit. That's that's where I would be doing. Yeah. Because that's step one, step two, it's yeah. <clears throat> but it, it is used in a lot of contracts for because well, it's rigid. Because it's, it's rigid. Giving, yeah. Right. Because you're giving people money just for being there. For people five years from retirement, just continue getting more money just because they're having a plan. And haven't done no training mm -hmm. and haven't done, yeah. you know, the hell will run. So, do you need a motion to put the 25? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would say revise. Most of it's staying the same, but you can revise <laughs> the April 11 incentive program to change um, the uh, category A uh, training to 25 cents each one. And then and then C is uh, I mean B B is the 300 and defer on the MRGP yeah. and C. And okay. Again. Yep. okay, you got that motion? <laughs> you agree with that? Yes, I agree with that. Got so moved. Okay. So mm -hmm. well, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Now we get to the highway mm -hmm. and ground diesel oh. 10,000 gallons. What was, was what what was option C? Negotiated. Yeah. yeah. No, no value to just it's a case by case negotiation, okay. presentation, discussion, whatever. So now oh, underground diesel. Well, this came up uh, following an inspection of this UST by the state uh, a week ago, 10 days ago. And they looked at all the records and found out we were doing what we're supposed to do. That's one of the things they do. And they looked at the tank and the structure and the layout and checked the date, which is 1994, install. And automatically, she just put us on notice. Hey, by the way, your warranty on this thing runs out next year. You guys can start thinking about what you're going to do. Because it's a double layer, double wall, double wall, and you're testing that for leaks or either way, in, in from groundwater or out from fuel. Um, that's really what you're, you're worried about. Mm -hmm. So, do we just keep testing and making sure there's no evidence of that stuff and carry on and no cost really, other than three hundred dollars a year to monitor? Um, there's an annual fee to pay for the state of Vermont, of course. But, mm -hmm. um, or do you do something else for no reason? Because there really is no reason if you're not leaking. It, the only other reason you'd have to lift that out of the ground and replace it or put it above ground or start running over to the mobile station for diesel is if you're trying to solve the problem because all that's going to be probably more costly. Mm -hmm. So we have a paid tank. It's in the ground. It's very low cost. It's giving us a good deal on bulk of purchases. Don't, wow. don't upset that. But you do want to talk about the what ifs, because at some point it has to be done, it has to be has to be replaced. I've been, that's, through, I've been through this. We had a double wall in Morrison. Yep. They did their drilling, they did their holes and stuff, and it showed a little bit. Yep. So then they put us on, and we pulled that tank out. Yep. And got rid of it. Today, you've got the mobile station, you've got everything over there, more so. Is open 24 hours a day. They give you fuel anytime you need it. Yeah. My thing is, get rid of that tank up there because you're in a lot of problems if you have a leak. I think you're in a massive saving by buying wolf though. But it's it don't pay because you look and see what the insurance is. Well, it. I think that's I, I can answer that question, not tonight. But I think if we had a leak, let's say we did testing, all of a sudden it just burst. Whatever yeah. worst case scenario, yeah. both walls burst the same day. Yeah, worst case scenario, that's going to seep into the ground. Oh, now right. what? What does that mean to anybody? Is what I can answer for you because there is, you know, between the once it goes past warranty, you you're it's on you. 
Yeah. It's on you and insurance. So what is the insurance? What happens? I, I can answer that question. I can't answer it today, but that's the worst case scenario that I can think of. No warranty, double wall break for some reason. So we have one year. Yeah. Yeah. So then we look, start looking at the next year. I think that was the state's recommendation is you should start to now, does does that mean the risk isn't there? It is I think there. I think the biggest risk is that the warranty gets used because the tank failed within its warranty period. I think you're probably covered there for anything that happens with a warranty. Um, what would hurt if we pulled the tank and just left the tank up top and used the tank up top? <laughs> oh, yeah. They did that down there. And I ended up dealing with it afterwards. And you get that tank out of the ground, you get rid of it, done, over with, because that's a liability even sitting there on the land. I know they put it out behind the salt shed, and I dealt with that when Bill and Roscoe left. We, we can answer the liability question. That's what it is. So we're not, we don't have that information yet, but I can get it. I, I think it's a perfect thing for them guys right at the mobile station to stop and get their fuel. You don't have to worry about leaks. You don't have to worry about nothing. Let's run some analysis. We've got yeah, years to talk about it. Let's run some analysis. Let's run some insurance costs. We've got it. This can this can stay on the action. This can stay on our agenda for the next year. Right. So we but let's just let's just not forget about it in three months. Didn't we just get more fuel? So what was the price of the fuel? Uh, but they'll work with you. Recent there. And the right price over there. When it yeah, I think it was mid three. I think three. 360 something. Hey, can I make a comment? 10,000 gallons spilling up. Matt Reed is hey, on line. Hey, Matt. Hey, um, I just was going to make a little quick uh, comment about the fuel tank. Um, when I know I'm all about putting all the liability on the mobile station or the whatever Sitco station, but if we actually have an ice storm, um, we will still have fuel in our tank and a generator to run it when that Morseville tank may not have a generator or it may be sold out rather quickly before we can get to our fuel. So I think that should go into the balance of um, what we do in the future. I understand the risk of having a tank there and I don't like that myself, but I also want to look at the emergency management risk. That's when all, thanks. The power map went out, when the power went out, I had a 500 gallon skid tank out behind the garage in a tank. And I kept that thing full all the time. As a matter of fact, Stowe didn't have one, Stowe wanted it. And Steve was calling me up to get fuel. And I said, no, I'm keeping my fuel for us. And that was during one of those big storms. Yeah, so it sounds like, again, making the listing for here's the pros and cons and, and then figuring it out what the other costs are. And then if you're going to have a 500 gallon skin tank, do you still have a, you still have a line? But you've got a tank in there that will cover that. If, you know, if something okay. like that. Okay, see, this will, be, this will be as exciting as saying. <laughs> I, I just, I'm telling you, it's not a liability. I think it was back in the day, it was, Lindenville that had one leak back then, and it was over some hundred and some odd thousand dollars that they had to tear up, dig all that dirt out, and to take it off somewhere. So they had to cover it. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. okay. Well, we'll just start coming up with the research and here's the list and make it We can look at Austin A, B, C, and D. Yep. Yep. Okay. Oh, warrings. Right, it's gonna cost a lot more money than we thought. I, 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 I'm gonna go out. I'm just gonna say this. There's a sand pit right next to us. I don't know. There's seventeen thousand dollars worth of bang for a buck. I agree. That's that. That's essentially if we're using five thousand yards a year. That's essentially a four dollar cost. Yeah. <clears throat> What's it gonna hurt? There's plenty of real estate up there where if we start running into a main, it's no good. We'll build another bank. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe I'm wrong, but seventeen thousand dollars. Yeah, I, I can. We can dig a lot of gravel in the wrong spot for seventeen thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's just the. Uh, is he running any veins? That he hasn't. 
Mark has he start, it. No, he's starting to see more sand, the beach sand stuff, come up from lower the yeah. elevation. But I think he's what got, their neighbors have seen. Yeah, and I think he's got some good stuff up top still. Yeah, rock the pile. Okay. So he's trying to pile the rocks up, and when it switches over, we can do a little blending. Exactly. Yeah, that's what the rocks are up there for. So you can mm -hmm. blend them. I think we might need a different crusher to get to some of the rocks, but the crusher is really a finer. You know, McCall has a finer screen on his stuff. But they can get a hammer right there. Yeah, you can chunk it up a little. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's fine. I just want to get you that information back. You would asked to. It was really hard to get anybody to commit to any price. Yeah. yeah. It was took that, like six months to get. It's not SW Gold. Uh, the boring company. Yeah. Uh, platform, platform is a company. Yeah, I don't know what state they come from, but yeah, around here. Okay, so we're not going to do that. No, we can defer it. I think you know, from Mark's perspective, I think he's he's seeing some things that make you wonder. Yeah, but he'll he'll come to us when it, if it gets really bad. I guess right. I mean, he doesn't have the option to find any more new stuff. I see he's worked from the ball, like he's gone to the ball fields. Is that was that like is this just how Mark's and now he's gonna work his way back to the road? Is that what he's uh, it's kind of backwards from uh, how I envisioned it because I thought we'd be able to move the ball fields. So now like our now he's right up against the ball fields and he's got 30 years or whatever, 20 years to get back to the road, and it doesn't ever allow the ball fields to kind of go back down. So someday I probably should talk with him about it. But you can still go toward the woods. The road's a long ways from there. Well, no, have you been up there? Here's your ball fields, right? Yeah. And you got one ball field. Yeah, I don't know why he's fields, starting back, back like that. He's cut everything all the way back to the road here. So now the road is going all the way here. But now he's got all this back here. So right. Where I thought we were going to take from this corner and work our way this way. So then this field, when we hit this, this field could be here. And then you can go all the way back toward the road because right. that road can be moved back. He's back to the road here now. He is. At the ball field. I wonder how much it costs us to move that topsoil up there. <laughs> they they moved it with their own experience. I don't know it. <laughs> this time too soon. It does have an issue. Yeah. Yeah, on, on site. Just, yeah, it is. And I have something like him and I can talk because if, there's a scoping for I mean, we have 20 years to talk about it, but just to make sure it's methodical because what's going to happen is. The way he's got it right now for us to drop the ball fields, we're going to be pinched between kids playing around an active pit. So, my yeah. concern. There's a berm there, right there. No. There's no berm there. What do you mean? Oh, well, between up, up top right now, there is. Yeah. But, but when he has to take this field out, where might that field supposed to go down in here? Well, that field shouldn't come out. He should be working his way back all that way. Yeah, he is working his way back that way. But where am I going to put that field? At that time, when he his last piece is going to be right here, and I didn't get ready for me to be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but he's got another 20 years. Yeah. That's why I just want to make sure that he skips, leaves this piece, skip, and goes over here so I can put the ball in 20 years. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's see what you're saying. Yeah. have <laughs> a place to go with this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> and the, the start pointing at the beginning is to come and do it. Yeah. Okay. Because we go deeper up there. I think the Infram Town Administrator. Okay. But I think that has Steve come to work for two days? Steve had a very good day yesterday as the new zoning administrator. We we had a planning administrator, some planning staff. Um Spent all day with him going over everything, getting his laptop working, getting him signed up for various stuff. Went to the planning commission meeting and just kind of observed. Um, and at the end of the day, he's like, yeah, we'll see you on Thursday. So what he's doing is because we had two night meetings, he's showing up at eight o'clock and then just working till eight o'clock at his 24th. So his schedule probably will have two days of office time so people could know when he's in there, but then that third set of eight hours will be pushed to this meetings or off-site stuff. Uh, but but I did say that's one of his first things. He has to find out what his posted hours are so that when somebody talks to Krista, oh yeah, he'll be in his office on these two, two days from here to here or something like that. But with only 24 hours, he doesn't have the flexibility of us working like I was working salary. I just stay, you know, he has to figure out where to put his 24 hours. So that's 
that was good. It was, he's got a 90 day probation. He seemed to be very comfortable doing what we were doing, listening, moving on. He's very um, patient and calm, you know? So throwing a bunch of stuff at him and he'd say, well, slow down. Can you repeat that? Because I, you know, I lose track of how I'm going over stuff sometimes. So at the end of the day, he's like, I'll, you know, I'll see you on Thursday. So but every, every day with new employees is like, you're going to see you next time. You know? <laughs> so, so that was a big, you know, from a from a town administrator transition window, that was one of our bigger pieces was the planning and zoning piece. So we can get that established. I think that was uh, a good a good move. Uh, the next one, which is part of what we're talking about tonight, is what do you all want to do uh, going forward over the next? I'm using six to seven months, which is really the FY25 budget season. Um, and that is um, coupled with training and putting projects in, in a path, trying to figure out if you all want to have, um, uh, what do you want for a permanent town administrator replacement? You know, redo that job description, figure out the hours. Do you want 24 hour job, town administrator? Do you want 40 hour town administrator? Do you want a grant community development person to focus on bigger projects that take a lot more time than what we're doing now, which is a lot of highway and one-off projects. Um, so some big decisions there. And it's really kind of a five-year look because some of the projects, if you decide to do a big project, let's say, let's move the town and village offices to Main Street. That's probably a five-year project. And right. You probably want the same person working on it. Um, you know, do you want to uh, do more outreach and community development housing? You know, we haven't done a housing project since uh, really Sterling View with Ken Harvey back in the 90s, you know, and Wolcott was joining at that point. Um, we we did work with the Loyal Economic Development Corporation up in the industrial park to do a few lots up there, partnering with them. That was, again, back in the 90s. So it's been almost 30 years since the town itself has done any kind of real sort of bigger substantial projects. Part of that's... I, you know, Ken Harvey was initiator for most of those projects, and he, when he got off, he was he still helps out a lot. But there was mm -hmm. there's uh, I don't know if it was the board decision not to pursue big projects or what was going on. But certainly, some towns take on big projects, regional recreation facility. Well, you have to look at the county and try to figure out what everybody's doing before you figure out what High Park might offer. And a lot of those things take time. So, and then you have your day to day stuff. So. Uh, well, it was, uh, it's, it's, it's a good discussion. I think it's, it's a timely discussion because I'm, you know, going to be done on the 25th from the retirement system, and I'm willing to come back as interim to help get through that phase and figure out all that stuff. But it's up to you what you really want to do. I guess. Well, my thing is, I think we should advertise the position. You're you're going to start your own business, right? Essentially, that's what we're. Looking yeah, at. I mean the consulting service. Yeah. It, would be to help what whatever the what, board what wants better to help than, what better than to find this person obviously find an outline of saying town administrator 32 hour week position so i feel like there's a very value in people want to work 32 hours so for some reason when you can say you can work 40 and these people are like yeah, yeah. There. Yeah. you know but i don't know that people want a job with their own benefits so that's why i think we advertise like a 32 hour. i mean we you know say they 24 to 32 depending on what they want and then this person stepped in and at the same time we're using your services and knowledge Probably and experience and speed, right? yeah you know yeah. that's where i would like to see it but yeah no i think getting getting to that job description yeah and figuring out if it's one or two jobs johnson is in the middle of that same situation they have town administrator they have a community economic and um a position community economic development something like that or combined mm -hmm. and they're either two semi-part-time jobs or one full-time job right. so they couldn't figure out you know what the candidate pool would be and they said maybe we'll find somebody that can do it all maybe we can find somebody that doesn't they, that they want the 32 to three day week, four day weeks, and they're they're going to be really good at it. So let's go for two people in that position. So all that stuff is, it's just a hard predicting. Well, how, well it is you know, how do you predict what these are? It's actually going to slow, but I mean, thinking about it a lot, maybe. Um, 
you know, when we, when we started making the transition for, um, it, and we really started with what is the town coach job? Because before it's taken us three years to get the right financial person in. Um, and and um, because a lot of the backup or invoices and all sorts of things that Captain Clark was doing, it, it just, we said, okay, let's, um, <clears throat> we had we had him and two people in the front office. Well, a year ago, we were, we were in, in straight dire straits. Yeah. I, I started about a year ago. We didn't have an account person at all. We didn't have Justin. We didn't, right. you know, so a lot but, of stuff is all falling into place. It is, and, but, it, but it's falling into place. It didn't magically it was falling into place. Right. Well, it yes. takes a lot of stumbling along the road, which is I sort of feel, okay, it was still there. And and hopefully, um, and and we also have in Krista, who is quite willing, who's going to be trained so she can be the backup payment person. You know, she's perfectly willing to do that. She's interested. I, I think there are a lot more things that she is interested in willing to, you know, to pick up. Mm -hmm. um, she very she she likes doing those sorts of things. Assuming, and you know, for Steve and for us, you never know until somebody works to you for a while, to, you know, to find out. That if he is the fit that he appears to be, it's like, oh yeah, this is like, phew, okay. <laughs> this is this is uh this takes a gigantic bunch of work, but it 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 isn't just the planning, the zoning that it takes, because his background is um he's comfortable uh talk, talking about um what you need with human resources and he's done work in those sorts of things. So he's he's coming with a lot of background and a lot of experience. Which I, again, sort of fitting into a whole whole team would be good. I think <clears throat> the, the the next step when I told Ron in going this route that he has to do two things. He really has to keep track of his hour, and he needs a different cell phone so that everybody doesn't have a cell phone number because we are all it isn't it isn't just we're all so conditioned to calling Ron. 24 7 and we have to stop that one of the things i really like well, that's, that, that's what you're going to shut off I, that, <laughs> no, I, it's yeah. five o'clock this morning <laughs> dog <laughs> complaint from the sheriff i deal with that i deal with that. dog complaint from the sheriff my wife's like that phone's got to go <laughs> <laughs> five o'clock is just a little bit in her beauty sleep <laughs> that's right but but it is it's sort of it's, it's making those changes and taking advantage of Ron doing it this way as we were so let's, so we let's, let's work on in the next month. Let's find an outline that says what is what is what is the role with, with this with this new position. And I mean Justin, we've got the minutes now and the zoning stuff with the new guy. What's left? Exactly. So that's what we have you know, it's it's a, is it the agenda? Is it is it whatever, you know? Well, it's all the stuff, it's the building the budgets, right. the day to day, it's the everything, you know. Again, that's what with with Ron can tell us that, that, that there's a, but it, it's now with the with Steve hired and with Justin, it's in a very different position, you know. And then if you look in the future that you do your town administrator, but then you say, okay, we do want this whole piece for doing grants and looking at big projects and doing that sort of thing. The great thing about that kind of work with grants is there's usually money within grants that pays for the administration of grant. With his, with his, well, yeah, that, that and what I like about that, like if we're, he's got a consultant that that's, that's something we can, you know, hey, there's money in that and let's work that, you know, it, there might be 10 grants out there that we're chasing and there might be two, right? you know, where to have a person allocated to chase uh, something we don't know, right? seems. And with, with, but with all the experience that he already has in that, right? Plan, so that's where a consultant, it's easy to, right. Well, it's easy to say goodbye or hello, you know. <laughs> sort of like you know the book. I'm full yeah. yeah. Well, one of the things that binds towns, and I think some of the struggles I've seen in other towns is the commitment to an employee for some of these things that are really uh, professional focused things that the town needs, and then you end up trying to find the right person, and it's it's hard, you know. So my only my discussion that we need to have is what is left on that list, just like that Matt said, because I don't really, I don't, I can't tell you what your priorities are, right? 
I can't tell you if you say, okay, I'm, we're going to do this plan B. And then you, and I say, it's going to cost you a hundred grand. And you're saying, we don't want that plan. You know? yeah. But we have to have that kind of discussion. Right. Yeah. Figuring it out. Yeah. So I think, I think that's why the first order is to look at the town administrator job duties, where you want to be. And, I, and I'm suggesting a, a five-year window. Not a, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to take on that big housing project, Right. And you want to work with Johnson on something, recreation, you know, those are compli relatively compli everyday things that if you want it to move forward, you can't just say, well, we talk about it at the next select board meeting. Right. You have to have somebody kind of giving you the update versus trying to figure out what the next step is. So that's what that's where I was proposing that, you know, from a from a consultant perspective regular updates to the board so you're not second guessing what's actually happening you know right. so that you're always informed about that stuff yeah. and that you're comfortable with it and when you're not comfortable with it yeah. you're you say we're going to go another path or whatever and, and for me i feel like the one thing like when we start talking about the position the filling the town administrator that the one piece that we're missing is the constituents of the town need a personal call that's what it really comes down to i mean some towns have a head chair or whatever their chair takes all the calls and or whatever but that's not realistic so it's you know like that's we just what's well, your number that comes. I'm supposed to sing that but <laughs> no. no that that that's right and, that, and that, that's an important part of the of the job and that's where Again, with Steve, he's into you know the, the, the weeks that he has the meetings, but he's into he's very really into you know, probably the uh, Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays he'll be in the office. Right. And and the Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Except then, you know, when he's got the night meetings, as you say, so he so so what happens when Monday's a holiday? A lot of these Mondays turned into be holidays. Does he work three days still that week? Or? I'm trying. Well, he's going to work that way, sure. So it, so it'd be Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I think that, well, there's a, uh, just a clip. Yeah, I think there's a posted hours where people need to know he's there. But that's probably going to be more like 16 hours posted. Yeah. And the eight are going to have to cover training and night meetings and other things. So I think if I can get from him, you know, Tuesday, Thursday from eight to four, yeah. something like that, that will be what people are told. Yeah. And then if he has to stay for an extra four hours for a meeting, he's got that in his schedule. If he wants to come in on Wednesday, he'll be here, but it won't be advertised. See what I mean? So it's it's one of those hard things when you have night meetings and trainings that you, you have to make room for that when you only have 24 hours. If you're on salary, you can have Monday through Friday, eight to four, and you just go to night meetings, which is what I usually do. You know, But when you're at 24, it has to be a little bit, you have to really have posted hours that you're there. And you can't just say, well, we're not going to come in because they have three night meetings. I have to work that out with them. I told them that was his first kind of homework, homework <laughs> test. And then, it'll, you know, Krista will have it. You'll have it. It'll be advertised and people will know when to come in and get service on zoning. But lots of those calls that come in about those things now, those will go to see. Is you know, currently, you know, <clears throat> what was the most wrong. So you start... Okay, so that gets peeled away from what your town administrators can do. So here are the kinds of calls every single day that you get. Here's what, yeah. The five o'clock in the morning dog call. <clears throat> like it's, in my personal opinion, the way I see things headed, us select boards are going to be taking a lot more phone calls if we don't end up managing that role. Oh, absolutely. Back. Right. Right. So there's our incentive to manage it well. Yeah, but you are the default to the town administrator. I know that. Yeah. And I can see where the, that's like you said, it's it's headed that way, you know, where as as Ron gets rid of that phone that you mentioned, right? Somebody's gonna they're not gonna stop at the first phone call. <laughs> right. You know, so yeah, no, I think whether it's a contractor, you know, interim permanent town administrator, really the town administrator role is working with the chair of select board to deal with those frontline complaints and yes. concerns. Yes. And get a speedy response, if yeah. not immediately within an hour or two sometimes. Right. And that takes coordination, you know, that that person needs to have. The worst thing to do is have somebody that has a relatively easy complaint not get a response for two or three days. Yeah. 
it just makes it all the all the much worse that it should have been. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then it spreads like wildflower or whatever when, when it really could have been a simple, I'll call you right back answer. And that I mean that's people have gotten used to get paid for, right? But people realistic. have gotten used to that. You know, they've gotten used to a relatively prompt response from the town officials. Yeah. I'm thinking of too is that Stephen here that doesn't leave that office open anymore for the town administrator. So where's that person going to be? Are they going to be remote? Are they going to be working here? And if so, where? That's over by the assessor station. So it's a little bit of a corner that could be redone into a little office a little bit, but it's not a lot of space. Yeah. So the the interim position for town administrator would be uh, flexible based on need is how I'm looking yeah. at it. So like today, we had a meeting at the courthouse with the tree warden. I had to be there for that to help Dave and Jim Pease figure out maintenance issues with trees and landscaping. But I, I don't have, I personally, even as town administrator, don't have people walking in for service. Never had, it's always been an appointment, I'll meet you there. I'll be on site. I, you know, I've never had that finance director, finance manager. Nobody walks in to see the finance manager. They may come in because they invited because we have an issue we have to talk about in the office. The zoning administrator, however, is walk-ins a lot. That, that is the that is the position where you walk to the town office. You want to shed permit. You don't want to talk on the phone. You want to go talk to somebody's face. And Krista says Tuesday, Thursday, eight to four. Or leave a message and maybe they'll just do a special appointment for you. So the town administrator, as far as I, I can tell, other than select board members, sometimes in the past would want to stop by the office and chat. That's kind of the only relationship I can think of that was more of like, you're there, you need to have be available in case I stop by. But easily done with appointments too. And that's how it usually happened, you know. If, you're going to be in the office, or can you come up and meet me? Yeah. That kind of thing. So, yeah, well, we are going to have it. We are going to have to with some kind of office space for them. Well, right, right now, yeah. the or they go if we're going to go 32, like well, at work, something we've done, uh, we bought a smaller office, and it, with the fluctuating hours, where if he commands Tuesday, Thursday, the next one gets Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, yeah. yeah so there's there could be a split yeah. shift on that office. Right now, that's what I you know. Today, Steve wasn't in. I was in his office. In quotes, even though I have my my Giants poster still in there. <laughs> um, when he was here, he was in the office. I was in the lunchroom, or I was on site visits, or even downstairs. Uh, Julia had that office. As town administrator, right. so that room's open anyway. And that's easy. that's almost empty after we get the artwork out of there. So that's set up for phone and internet. That could be redone as an office area. It's about the only space we have left yeah. in the building, yeah. unless the village moves out. Uh, corner office. Yeah, <laughs> down in the dark in the back corner. Yeah. The mice. Yeah. <laughs> that's why that window's in there because she wanted some light to come into her office. Yeah. yeah. I understand that. So there are some options with even Guy and Valley Hall during the during the suburbs a bit office space for you know send some services to North Park. Yeah. So there are there are options. There's not much, but like Justin saying, where does that person go? There are there's the shared office. There's down here. There's Guy and Valley Hall. By another building, set it up here. No, I should. Be It's only six thousand bucks for a little office in the back. Sure. Yeah, it's kind of open. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> three season room. Yeah. <laughs> oh. so, okay, so, so basically, no, this is this idea of, of doing that, you know, doing a signing a contract with Ron so that he uh, he ends on the 25th of June and then his business he goes back as our consultant on the, the 5th, 6th of July. And, and, and again, <clears throat> thinking about it is yeah, sort of the goal. It's a work out of the contract. Yeah, well, it, for, yes, town administrator, <laughs> like, you know, but that it's getting through because whoever comes in, building a budget is a really important part of the job. 
I got a good financial person. I just so if you got somebody new and right. Ron can take somebody through it once that will be very helpful. In this switch, as Ron moves to his own, I want to make sure that we're doing, I mean, granted, we're laying on him and saying, hey, thanks for sticking around. But I want to make sure that we're recognizing the town people and saying, hey, we are advertising this job. This is happening. Because not we quite there yet, but we're going to get there. Right. Right. I haven't done that yet. And I feel like we just keep pushing it on and saying, ah, we're going to get there, going to get there. Yes. No, there's no there's no intention yeah. long term. Yes, but I want people to see that. You know, they're, like, they're, yeah, we're doing that right now. Right? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. That. I'm just, I'm just. And again, but the first big part was was being. Yes, we, we have that. You know, we made the steps. Yeah, and, there, and there's still some people that don't know we're making changes. Yeah, you know, they don't know that we have a new zoning ministry until I tell them. You know, so it's going to be a big transition window for just getting the information out. We could even take a front porch forum blurb about tonight's meeting. Yeah, and just keep keep putting that out there. Yeah. I didn't want to do anything until this meeting because we're. You know, I don't, I know, I can't predict what the whole board wants to do. So mm -hmm. if the board's moving that direction, then we definitely need to get the word out from the select board, from porch forum, uh, that kind of angle so people know. Do you have any thoughts? Do you want to say anything? Well, my um, question is, is how long are we, what's this contract consist of? Like until we're done with Ron or is this like a one year and we'll reevaluate a year? Is this a... The draft contract goes through the budget season ending June 30th. Or February 1st, I put in there just to get through the budget because both Jennifer hasn't developed a budget. And if you end up finding somebody somewhere during the budget process to take on a 24 hour town administrator role or 30, whatever, they haven't done that, that process. So it's going to be, it, it may be hard to find somebody, but you, we have to get to that job description to advertise. So it's going to take a little time. More than likely, they're going to be starting if you do it really quick in the middle of the budget season. Right. Okay. And that's that's triple time basically between Jennifer, the new person, and me working on the budget, just so I can don't have to do the budget again if they get it. The idea would be to to you know come up with whatever the town administrator is. If there's a if the board feels like you want to put more time and effort into community development projects and grant projects, the town administrator ends up being the day to day complaints, um, financial. Like today, we we're doing. AP, we're onboarding people, we're checking, you know, whether an invoice was valid or not, uh, doing bank reconciliations. Those are all things that happen during the course of the day that have nothing to do with the, uh, the grant. Yeah. yeah, just, you know, keep, so there is a, there is a different, and I, and I was watching the Johnson Select Board when they have the same discussion. If you want to go on YouTube and see some of their last meetings when they're trying to decide, they, they were uh, Evan is on there, which I think you might know Evan. And, and he's my brother. Yeah. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's got some really good focus. I say, look, if we if we do this, it's going to create problems. If we're going to do this, it might even create more problems. You know, they're really struggling with what they're going to do. And they said, you know, it'd be better potentially. And this is why they, they kind of came up with this two answer option. Mm -hmm. Of having the town ministry doing day to day, working with the select board agenda, making sure all the dots and T's are crossed and allowing a, a person to come in and do the grants and the bigger project and making sure that the state's coordinated with all those grant things. And, and they, what happened in Hyde Park when I'm doing both, somebody loses, you know, a reimbursement's delayed, a deadline might be missed, you know, a grant application goes in that's 50% of what it should be, you know, for, for breaking high. You know, those are all the problems with not having that. But if your interest is in moving projects ahead and grant projects to conclusion, it needs attention that's not distracted by dog bites and health officer, you know, rental complaint, <laughs> which takes a lot of time to do. Necessary, even if you find somebody in the next quickly, you need training and all that right. stuff. So, it, I mean, I think it's Thumbs necessary. Up. Hmm? Up. No. <laughs> She knows what job she wants. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I, I think we do we got a plan for our next rule and forward. I think it, it is one when, when uh, <clears throat> looking at it realistically, things will start to hit. Our, our goal should be like by the end of July, the middle of July, we could do, again, depending on people's schedules, just do. One meeting that all we talk about with Ron is the 
you know, okay, is what are what are the jobs? Brian could get that ready for us beforehand. Here's, you know, how do we want to split this up? What does it look like? And come up with a job description and right. And obviously it's his rate is gonna be a little a lot higher than that, one, you know. So um, we'll have to put a cap on what we spend a week and all that stuff too. So yeah, I think the idea was that through the board's directives, like yeah. what do you want done? You'd be clear about that. Mm -hmm. And I'll report weekly to Jen. Mm -hmm. And then you can get those reports and just kind of feel it up. It's really hard to predict hours, but you can control the tasks. So right. in, in one sense, if you say, let's get this job description done and let's get fit, finished with Steve's training, it's going to take so many hours to do that. Yeah. But then it will conclude. So it's a little bit different than yeah, transition. It's a little different than that. You want to look at it as task completed and yeah, move on to the next thing versus managing the day to day stuff because it's hard to do that. Yeah. But you'll see the impact of it through the billing, obviously. And you can manage that and say, we don't like this, this is too much or whatever, or this is about right because we're getting stuff done. Right. You, know, you want to feel good about that. I think we need a motion, right? Let's see what we do. I'll make a motion to uh, keep her on as a consultant beginning July 5th till the financial year 2025. I think the draft is February 1st. Uh, I don't know what you got. I have paper on that. In yeah, the papers. Yeah. We're going to accept the draft essentially. What you, what yeah, the draft I didn't change it since I sent that out. Yeah. It said that if we don't like it, I think we just have to give them a third day notice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, you got to take around for 30 more days at a time. That's right. Um, yeah, February 1st, 24. Yeah. The handout thing. Uh. I printed out those uh, the draft contract if you wanted to copy of those. No, I saw it. No, I just don't know if you have no. one paper. Yeah, paper. Okay. Paper stuff. Paper copies. Okay. All right. Mm -mm. Okay. So we're accepting this contract. Is that basically what it is? The authorized Susan to sign. Yeah, I guess if that was an ad amendment to that. When will you have the grand list ready, by the way? July 11th. That's okay. No. July 6th, it's the day of grievance. Oh. July 11th, it's the day we'll plan on having select board set the tax rate. July 11th. That's a regular meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was just, sometimes we're debating a special meeting. Right. But July 11th works. We don't have a special meeting. Very good. Okay. You have a second? I'm sorry, I, I was probably reading something different. Oh. <laughs> I got reading any and stuff. Yes, oh, yeah. You're still reading the, the, the everything else. Yeah. And so far, I have motion made by Savannah Droney to keep Ron, well, wrong, to keep Ron as a consultant until July 5th, 2023, until February 1st, 2024. And I don't have the amendment to have Susan authorized. Can you just say that it's not just for Susan to sign the contract? She's amending that. Yeah. I'll second it. There's not another option at this point, right? I mean, let's get the phone back to it. Hey, no, I don't know. That'd be a wrong You do have a, again, I just want to make sure that we, I, I don't want the town to look at me and say, hey, you're a select board member. You knew Ron was leaving and you did fucking not. Yeah, and now I just want to look, look like a collusion where I'm paying Ron a, a rate that exceeds his salary. That's what I just want to make sure that we as a group are making our best efforts. Right. 
And you can respond by saying here are the positions that happen. Yes. Yeah, I think it's I think the idea is that it was to get to the transition, we had to finish the planning and the board clerk first to know what was next. And I just threw the June 25th out there to yeah, yeah. as a as my own personal date that sort of fell in between the two, you know, before you had a chance to do the job description and hire the new people. Are you going to be at the next meeting? No. Not me. <laughs> no, he won't be on with David sleeping by the same. Try to be on vacation for the summer. Yeah. yeah. Of anybody opposed? Anybody in staining? <laughs> That's right. Probably. What? What? He just needs more. He's, uh, he's, he's making notes about sand. Um, <laughs> um, That's what I mentioned earlier. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Um, we can't negotiate that with him. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it in the sixty-five hour an hour. That's yeah, what so, I mentioned earlier. Well, no, about that's, budgeting. No, so. that's that's a good question. So sixty-five. If I was under the town's, uh, if you think I'm fairly paid at thirty-five dollars an hour right now, I can pay you sixty-five dollars as a consultant. It's cheap. I know that. No, but I'm, I would need to walk this through because I don't want the town to get back in this position. Again, because it was slightly unfair to me, but it was also something we never really talked about. So when you take my current hourly at thirty-five dollars an hour and add in the benefits of a family plan, it gets up to fifty-five dollars an hour, right? Mm -hmm. So when I have thirty-three years doing multiple hats and jobs for thirty-five dollars an hour, and you're hiring all your new people with very little experience at thirty, there's sixty-five is probably under. What I should be charging, actually, like Matt is, yeah, yeah. And but but that's what I was saying earlier. Yeah, be, being that we our job is to look at budgets and maintain a budget. That's why I was saying we gotta just make sure. No, that's an, that is an issue. We're not. We're not gonna be able to say, yeah. "Well, I'm sixty five dollars an hour. I need you seventy hours this week." The budget going, you know. So that's where I was saying, "Hey, we gotta just make sure it's fair to." No, I meant I'm anticipating the twenty four. That's what I put in there. Yeah. If you all want me to do more, then that's on that is a discussion about I don't get you answering dog calls on $65 an hour. No, no, I have, <laughs> I have to change that to sheriff's office. <laughs> but, no. I, I was doing that as a courtesy when we had it's, nobody, it, but it, I know we forgot to change it. $65 an hour that you can turn it to me. And I'll retire fully. Seriously, there is a lot of transitions that I dealt with animal complaints this week. Yeah. It was him complaining to me. Hey, <laughs> 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 talk to you. Hey, <laughs> did. The sirens. All oh, animals. animals. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was this week. That was last week. That was last week. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, see, Rolly had so, so, to But to answer your days. customer question, yes. when I submit the invoices, well, I'll do it very similar to what the town attorney does, basically. It'll be who was met, what was the topic, yeah, yeah. and there'll be some no charges under there because it was innocuous, it was yeah. short, mm -hmm. or whatever, or as a follow up. Yeah. So, you made the motion. I seconded it with the understanding that we're going to make yeah. sure we're well, advertising the position okay. and moving forward. Okay. Because I don't want us to be sitting here June 1 saying that we're still hiring. A consultant at that rate and have it looked. And that's all I want. I, and I don't no, want to. And, I, and, you, and we'll revisit this yeah. too. I mean, it's not even no candidates. And, really, and that's, the, that's the role. And then the guy who knows everything and there's a value there and it works. But I just don't want well, 2,500 town taxpayers saying, you guys didn't advertise for that. Yeah. And, it, and then it turns around and you guys didn't advertise and you're, there's collusion going on here all of a sudden. You know, I just don't want that. Conversation to be had. Well, would, would you like to set a date, like a deadline no, for yourself? I don't want to set that. No, I just want to. The progress or yes. I want to be fully vocal. <laughs> and you are. <laughs> Everybody has heard me. Is what I'm saying. This isn't. This isn't a. This isn't a. Hey, let's hide and not find this position. This is which steps. This is a, which is why. This is all being recorded. It's great. Yes. yes. You know, yes. yes. So we're on to something else here. Okay. Now it's somebody saying, like, why? Well, 
Uh, actually, we didn't, finish the, we didn't finish the bowl because he no, did not accept it. Okay. 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 <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, you always you you say, well, what, what, uh, where the hell was I? I missed that. Oh. <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, boy. <laughs> so Justin's going to record everything. <laughs> you have to read, read your minutes. We uh, it's the are our obligations and priorities to just sort of sort of seeing the only thing different is we got this thing from Amy. I suggest we go ahead and yeah, give Amy she, she did that. she did call my company okay. and I was the person said <laughs> what <happened? laughs> I'm not going to make, I, I wanted to just make sure that we were at least doing our due diligence. I, I know that another board member was upset about it, but I just want to, uh, you, you can't just spend town money based on, again, same thing, just say, yeah, it's not funny. And you can see what every job is like, yes. trying to get stuff, get contractors. Yes. And she did a really good job of summarizing the pain, yes. the pain she went through, just oh, yeah. trying to get an answer. Yeah. yeah. So, I think that's And, and this, this, this scope of work is a lot smaller yeah. than, like that's not something that our company would go chase. You know, we're we're bidding million dollar contracts. You know, this is more of a yeah. You know, no, this is some some of the smaller people do it now. You you want this is more weird. I'll make the motion to have yeah. Amy go ahead with Manash. Get that done. Okay. Oh, I'll grab you. Use the so, money. Yeah, it's an obligation not to exceed yeah. ten thousand. Not an obligation yeah. not to exceed ten thousand using ARPA money. I'll second it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All in favor signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Rolling abstaining. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Uh, the only other ARPA update at the last meeting, you talked about whether the Loyal Community House would amend their $14,000 request or not based on their new plan. They've sent a road. Wait, what did you say? I wasn't listening to you. I'm sorry. Just one of the yeah. one of the follow ups to the last meeting was you also want to know if the Loyal Community House yeah. was amending their prior fourteen thousand dollar request because of the Center Road project versus that request was done for the Main Street, and they said no. We're, we're asking all the towns for the same amount that we asked originally to support their three three sixty five fund, yeah. whatever that is. I think, uh, and um, and. And no towns have given them money yet. Right. She also said, "I think it's all right to sit on this with all the other apartments." Yeah. Okay, so that was yeah, the and again, it's like the stuff that, that we're moving forward with by far to be doing something like Amy. Just you know, the village someday will figure out what to do with their money. Yeah. 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 The only other item. Yeah, we had two other items. Cemetery Commission did not provide an itemized list for their twenty thousand dollar request for fencing and improvements and filling sunken graves. She had an initial idea that resulted in the ARPA request. Uh, so if they ever come, they haven't come back with a clarification of, on that. Uh, the other one was the fencing. Uh, we did reach out to VLCT on liability, and they they the only question they had was about signage. So that I don't think that project is at risk, but they may say don't don't encourage people to go there or it, or warn people to go there. So we kind of left it with, well, when you guys figure it out, let us know what we have to do or don't do on signage. So I think uh, Mary's moving forward with that, and I think it needed a it needed a motion tonight to authorize her request. What was her dollars? Twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred for. The not not we built right. project up in Northside Park. <clears throat> so whatever whatever the insurance company says will follow, but they haven't come back with anything on signage yet. So we'll 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 do whatever they say. <laughs> but I, I don't think it's gonna be a stopper on signage. What are the signs of danger ghosts? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Beware of ghosts. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, Sounds like an urban issue to me. <laughs> yeah. So if we get a motion, we have to vote. It, I thought we already voted to do this. Yeah. No, I, I didn't get a motion. I got a okay. It sounds good. Great to see something happen up there. But let's check with insurance. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I, I think I make a motion to get yeah. the goat. Just yeah. be done with that. Not yeah. to exceed twenty five hundred. Second. 
Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Got to go to the library. What more can we ask for? What was the amount for the cemetery? Uh, they were asking for 20, but they, uh, they, they haven't, they haven't they come through the support. Yeah, yeah, yep. so it's a deferred obligation. No decision. Yet. Okay. Finance memo. Did everybody get a copy of that yeah. from Jen? Yeah. yeah. He's very good about sending. Yeah, I just want to, we have, I think it seems like there's two questions in there, which uh, she kind of deferred to you a little bit. So I guess we have to talk about the both. I remember it's reading the name earlier. You did? Yeah. Again? Yeah. yeah. It was a, uh, she advertised an RFP for the new auditor. Right there. And switching from CDs to T bills. Those are the two questions. She's looking for your guidance or concurrence. Yeah. There was something earlier that said something about the recreation on that. I think T bills are the way to go. Numbers look like yeah. I would I, I like the four month window because she'll talk to me about capital projects coming up and I'll, I can tell her that the Nine hundred eighty thousand dollars is not needed for four months. If you go further than that, it gets a little iffy. Well, Certainly, a year would be four months. Also, the best rate. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, and the comparison between the two is rather large yeah. between a CD and a T bill. Uh, just to let you know, CDs are insured by the FDIC. The also sometimes you have to take four CDs out for two hundred fifty because of the cap on the insurance. Mm -hmm. The T bills don't have that because they're insured by the full faith of the federal government, which is a different type of guarantee. It's better than a lot of other things. So T bills generally are done with a larger dollar amount for the one, one deal. So in this case, it's whatever her number was, 980,000 for four months. She wants us to pick a month and an option, or we let her pick the month. Um, I wouldn't go any more than four, but it's it does leverage the interest rate that way if you go for the four rather than a longer period. Um, I don't. I think it's great we're doing. You know, it's an extra ten thousand every. But this is something we just talked about in that in that yes. value engineering. I mean, I'm almost willing to say we give her one percent of any money she makes us something like that. It's, it's yeah. simple, but you know what? She's fucking, she's a dog. She's my dog. She, she, that girl, I'm impressed. I mean, what would it, what would it, I mean, she went out and did this, just made us 10 grand. Yeah. You have a one percent, she made a hundred hundred dollar bonus. You know? Oh, yeah, there's definitely a little bit of work in it because you have to. It's no, it's no different than what you, we've done up there. I wait for the, you know, to looking at yeah, the paints and stuff like that. I mean, I think that's a good idea. I, don't know. I, I think it's an excellent idea. Is your value engineer at 1%, whatever she makes? Yeah, she'll cash out and prove that, that interest at some point. You know, she'll you know, hit maturity, get all that money back in our accounts, and the bank will say, here's your interest earned, or if you want to go 2%, whatever. I don't know. Whatever's there. I think it's. One percent is fair. Okay, yeah. I'm fine with doing that on what she's been paid in the past. Just made us ten grand, give her one percent of it. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good way to implement it. Is that is that legal? Yeah, of course it is. Well, it's a rec. It's really just a, uh, a recognition <laughs> payment. And you can come up with whatever formula you want. It, it's, they're, they're, not, they're not connected. They're, tax, they're your money. Yeah, they're not. They're not connected. So you're. But it's it's in what we just barely did. We just voted on value C, value engineer. There goes your taxes. I can tell you right now. For the last three years, five years, there's never been somebody working in this office that's ever created ten thousand dollars out of nothing. No, I, you, you want to make a motion? Gotta have a motion. 
Yeah. So we have a motion first to, to see what she wants to do, right? So yeah. she wants to go three months. That's what her suggestion is here. Four, 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 four months. Yeah. Well, I, don't, yeah, I don't know if she got to a Four has the best interest rate on the people. In a three months or four point five, but you you would earn eleven eight, eleven thousand dollars interest at maturity. This would be a relationship to four four nine. Nine. Four months. I'm wondering if you would like me to invest in the reinvesting in either CDs or exploring the options of TDO. TDO is a purchase at low cost and trade at higher interest. Than other options. Four months. Yeah, I mean, I think they she's giving you all the options yeah. I, from a management capital management cash flow. I wouldn't go farther than four. Yeah, just because I haven't yeah, looked at it. I'm gonna say last year, our last time she did this, there was this, those couple of payments that came out that we weren't really ready for. So. Yeah, it's all that kind of stuff, kind of close. Yeah, so we're gonna be careful with that. But for the next four months, nothing's, yep, nothing's at risk. Okay, so a motion that do the two bills for four months. Yep. And you get to throw that in that one percent. And we'll do that. Well, maybe we need to be a separate thing. Yeah, we'll do a separate. So um so you have a motion. We need a second for the motion on the two bills. Second. <clears throat> who first who first did it? I like the motion. Yeah. Thanks. So I'm not making like, any motions tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Most things, but here's what you can do. Okay, somebody next to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's hard when you're out here. <laughs> okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Yeah. I have a motion to, uh, to, uh, to recognize Jennifer Trico's outstanding work and her added efforts. Let's give her one percent of whatever she makes off of interest or off right, of her beginning, beginning with this and going forward. Finally, going back with the last one she just did. Well, that's the one I'm looking at. Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she technically hasn't done it yet. Right. She just... <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Second. We need to add anything to that, Ron? Uh, no, the only thing I'm thinking is that there's a, I was trying to figure out what a policy statement might be, you know, yeah. and right now she's doing three or four months slugs of a million dollars. So it's easy to have that apply. If she, if we go into a laddered CD or laddered process where you're having things turn over every month, mm -hmm. which is an interesting way to do investments then it gets a little more complicated to apply that. So it's almost like whenever she gets a big statement on investments, which are pre-approved by the board, 1% is uh, a payment to her upon the receipt of that interest statement. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And that would apply to any interest earned whenever they come in. So we don't have to tie it to any particular one, but any, any investment vehicle, whether it's a CD or T-bill or whatever. We'll have a maturity date and there will be an interest. Yeah. And that's the time we do the math. Right. I guess that works. Yeah, that works okay. Okay. Well, somehow get that and get just and get it written into a policy so it's there. Yeah. Motion made by Matt Morin to recognize Jennifer Tr Trico in her outstanding work and efforts with the town and to pay her 1% of the total interest earned from investments at the maturity date, seconded by Roland Roy. Oh, yeah. That's right. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Oh, sorry. Right. Starting with the 10,049.72 from the realized one yeah. last. Mm -hmm. That was realized in June. That can do. Do you have a maturity date? Right. It was the end of May. I think it was May 25th, right? I don't yeah. know why that name. That no, but I would use the date. That's what I'm saying. Whatever that maturity date was, put, put May 25th and we can check that. Okay. Good. So we know what we're, what we're talking about down the road. Thank you. Yeah. Do we still have the bottom one? 
Conduct the interviews. What's that? Do we still have the bottom one. Conduct the interviews. Yep, I got it right here. So, um, Jennifer uh, distributed an RFP. We got three responses back from three firms. She's uh, narrowed it down to two. She sort of has a top recommendation, and she's looking for your input. And I. And I, I did tell her, I said, well, you've done all the work, you've done the research, you did the interviews, and if you have a recommendation, you can make that one recommendation to the town, and they can authorize you to sign the uh, engagement letter, move forward. She's offering that the top two could be called in for interviews, so you get to meet the two firms and come up with your own um, whatever valuation or concerns you might have or whatever. I personally don't have a lot of recommendations for a select board to determine who's going to be your CPA firm. I totally rely on the finance manager. I was going to say, she asked right here, would you like me to conduct interviews with you for both firms, or would you like to yeah. give me permission to accept one of their proposals? I give you permission. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I could not, you know, they can come and meet and they'll do the snooze, you know, they'll give you a pencil or something, and you guys will right, be right back. You'll be, you'll be right back to what did Jennifer think? Yeah. 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 Cass is going to be the only one that understands it anyway. So, yeah. So, uh, both firms that were number one and two are one one and two of the very few firms that do municipal auditing. So you, you're lucky to get two. Uh, Glenna is the um, uh, CPA sole proprietor that already had two extensions of three-year contracts by the select board past her six-year maximum. So she's overextended under your own policy for continuing contracts. This this contract, when it's ended, would put you back in that position of advertising again, making sure that the, the people, sometimes a CPA firm you lock into for more than six years mm -hmm. because it's working well. But at some point, you still should test the waters and go back up. Mm -hmm. So Glennett, I'm just pointing out, Glennett has already been extended by the select board twice to continue through the, uh, the 21 audit, which she hasn't produced yet. As, as, Jennifer noted, and the new firm will have to start with point two, go back one. Do we have to make a motion for Jen Jennifer to be able to? I think you're, yeah, you're approving Jennifer to, to uh, work. And her recommendation was R.H.R. Smith from Buxton, Maine, uh, who does a lot of Vermont work and have her authorized to sign the engagement letter, which I think typically requires the chair of the select board to sign to. But she would work on a, a contract with them and bring it to whoever's authorized to sign it. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Will she authorize to sign the contract? Yeah, yeah. she will, and I probably need to. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. yeah, there's usually two signatures on it. Or three sometimes. Okay, yeah. Hold yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. When I looked at it, I've been hitting it. It's, like, it's a brand new copy here for the new guy. <laughs> 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 Easy to push an extra button. I almost made 66 copies when I wanted six today. So I know oh. it's a digital screen. So you oh. you can really click extra buttons pretty easily. <laughs> um, let's see. Minutes. Can we see minutes? I did. I had a question at the bottom. It says um, there was a motion by Chas to go into executive session. There's no second. Does that matter? Oh, let me just go through all these papers here. Yeah, I should have a second. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. I can go back in the, in the video and just... 
Mm-hmm. Thank you for calling that out, though. Make a motion and approve the warrants. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody still me? Well, please. The orthodox to get a shot in here, unique, where we put it, they can see you in October. <laughs> some, of the, some of those tax assignments, some she had them. Okay. <clears throat> but, oh, yeah, she got the time to sign things because I couldn't do it. Okay. I think she got about half of them. I didn't get some. Yeah. Some of them only had three games. Yeah. Okay. okay. I see we got the fire truck in there. Yeah. We got the fire truck. <clears throat> yeah, we quite don't always wait to come. Chastity was authorized to sign if I can. Yeah, it's awesome. Like, so it was like, hey, you don't want me to come in and play anything. <laughs> That's a bad plan. <laughs> um, what else? We have got anything else? Old business? New business? I didn't have it in the packet, but I wanted to give you guys an update on Sylvain Drive. What a pain in the butt project. <laughs> so originally, the Loyal County Conservation District did some preliminary engineering for stormwater basins, pretty much under Johnson Street extension. Yeah. So it's going to take Johnson Street, it was going to take Sylvain, treat the stuff, sort it, send it into the ravine that the state uses for their cross pillar. Um, project extended into the state right away. Two years ago, the state rejected it. They don't want anything to do with municipal projects, at least in this district. Not true for all districts. So Peter had to pay for a redesign to pull that stuff out and put it further up the hill and kind of stretch it out so it wasn't in the right way. Then the application went into the state clean water board funding and they approved funding for that. And they have a cap, whatever it was. Went out to bids three bidders, it was almost triple what the grant was for. Oh, yeah. The state will not do that in this case. They won't okay. They won't keep playing that game. So some projects are being canceled. Sylvain presents a sort of a, a dual project that we were trying to do, which was to upgrade that road, pave it, and turn it back to a private road and get off the plowing detail that we had there. So this is, Three houses at the top, and we're going to upgrade the road, and it'd be a great road for a long time, and we won't have to plow that. Well, again, one of those driveway questions that we are avoiding for a lot of different sections. So I talked to Peter Danforth today, and I said, Peter, what are the options to let the town project move forward? Can we do the hill, create some kind of you know flexion point at the bottom of the hill for potential future? Because I won't know that funding until the fall when the next round comes up to see what the state's going to do with all these contractor prices that are, you know, they're, they're, the grants are awarded on a three or five year average. Mm-hmm. So that's what, that's all you have is a three or five year average. One. But the pricing in the last two years has been out of the world, right? So none of the grant agencies, but VTRANS, not Clean Water Board are prepared for any of this stuff. The state got a whole bunch of money from the federal government for bridge projects. Guess no. what? The contracts are coming in twice as much, and they're going to do less less projects than they would have normally, mm-hmm. even with twice as much money. Mm-hmm. So Sylvain got caught up in that mess. 
and they they being watershed who's been designing this project for must be going to five years now have not they don't have any recommendation how we could do the hill and not create a problem at the bottom of the hill so if you're collecting stormwater and then dumping it where it doesn't go now you're going to end up with a problem at johnson speed extension or the bottom of the hill and any temporary measures that we put in like it's a catch basin down there would probably have to be redone do you want to do that um, so mark and i were talking today and i said without a clear path at this point do you just wait a year and see if this stuff sorts itself out you know, Peter can go back to the Clean Water Board and see that their policies are changing to meet the contractor prices, mm -hmm. or the state's going to start canceling projects and just being really selective on what they award, knowing that they're almost paying double from three or four years ago. That, that's hard. That's a hard, from a taxpayer perspective, or even grant agencies. What are you going to do? I said, we might as well just not do any projects and wait for everything to flood, you know, flood out and get 75% from the FEMA. It's going to happen. <laughs> why be why be proactive at 80 20 or 50 50 yeah. it's gonna be a huge problem when all of this extra money is gone away and our fleet budget's still only 365 million yeah, dollars up here and yeah. we used to we used to supply to 25 contractors and now you're gonna sit now yeah. you're gonna you're gonna basically get it's here now. Huh? it's here yeah well there's a bunch of extra money right now that's the difference right now there's all this flooded money that we it is keeping us busy but return gone. 2024 when the, the funding so there's two pots of money they had the the arpa money which is being spread around everywhere and then they have the new the federal yeah. investment yeah. react right yeah. and it's yeah. I, 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 is what the nickname is so i was coming down from the federal government for a lot of highway trade, bigger projects that jay got on like concerned and they're supposed to be getting it down to the rural town they say what's a rural town so you know you know fifty thousand or more yeah, you know. So what, what's a what's a three thousand population town going to get? Probably not a lot. I mean, Route, route Fifteen may get some action, right. you know, or something like that. But I don't think you're going to get it down to our level for these kind of projects. So we just got a quote on uh, East Main Street at Ten Ben. We call it the Ten Ben's Beer Culvert because it's right near Ten yeah. Ben's Beer, not flats over yeah. here in the flip. The box. That uh, about. Yeah. yeah. So. It's the same thing happened there. We had a cost of the 250000 to replace a four-foot culvert. <laughs> you know, you talk about $200,000 for a design study or, you know, $60,000 to study bike paths up in North Lake Park. Mm -hmm. it, it feels desperate. Like, where's all this money going to come from? Yeah. It, I'm on the other end of things. I'm big. And I'm, but, I mean, I 36-inch culvert. You know, we used to purchase it for like fifty-four bucks a foot. It's ninety-nine dollars a foot right now. Yeah, yeah, and it's all some places. It's <laughs> and I'm paying a lot more for people who have no way less than what they knew five years of the staff that we had five years ago. Uh, and again, I think that applies to both places. Mm -hmm. So we're feeling that in our projects that we had in, in the right. in the cycle. We're just we're debating. and I don't I can't go to you as a board and say, oh yeah, pay a hundred thousand because that's the new price. Mm -hmm. that's like, I defer that project until we figure out if this is a real long term thing. That's why when that scoping project came out about the, the Greensboro or the Greener Reservoir bridge, and I was like, I can see that being a four and a half, five million dollar bridge easily. Yeah, it's 750, but yeah. it's, <laughs> but that's the five year average yeah. type of cost, right? Not not the right. future cost, not the forecast yeah. that people are really looking at. So anyway, that's my update on the project. It's a, it's sort of like every project has a story now. It's not you can't go this linear path no. and expect very competitive contractor bids and a timeline move that's pretty certain. It's all it's it's just it's it's not impossible, not right, but you have to be really careful about where you put your dollars for the next bunch of years. Mm -hmm. If the pricing doesn't come down, if the contractors and material prices don't come down. There's going to be less projects done and more deterioration. Yeah, and then, and then there already is less projects being done. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, gloom and doom at the end of a meeting. But it's, I just want to let you be you know, Where's that Sylvain project? I'm like, well, we wish we had better news. Yeah, yeah right. So, hey, right. are we going into executive session for the personnel? No, I don't think we need it. Okay. I guess we can adjourn. Or can we adjourn? Sorry. <laughs> 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 okay, I have some ideas.